Hello, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser at San Diego State University, and I am going to show you how to check your manipulation check from Qualtrics into SPSS. So any experiment that you do, you have to have a manipulation check. The manipulation check is a question typically at the end of the post-test that basically asks the participants um, whether they can correctly identify the particular cell that they were in without knowing that there were different versions um, of the stimulus. And so the example that I'm going to do this on is actually a little bit of a complex type of a um, setup. And what I have here is a two by four factorial design. So that means that there are two different independent variables, which means in order to do a manipulation check, I need to do then two different um, manipulation check questions, one for each independent variable. And one of the independent variables has two levels, that's the organization in this case, and the other independent variable has four levels, and that is the type of apology that the organization is issuing in this case. So um, if you just have a regular experiment where you only have one independent variable, then you're probably only going to have one manipulation check question, and um, this process will be a little bit less complex than what I'm going to show you in here. So first off, um, in setting up our experiment on Qualtrics, we have everything in different blocks. And so I have the consent form block right here. Um, I have um, the first stimulus where I'm telling people you're going to read an article. And then I have um, stimulus cell number one. And then I have the timer. Um, and I, I won't unlock it. I have the timer in here, which is shown as question 23, automatically generated, um, as hold how long somebody stayed on this um, page. Then I go into the next block. You can see here, this is a whole new block. I'll go ahead and expand this. The next block, I have the same setup. Um, the introduction that you have to read this article below. This is a different version um, of the story where the only thing that's different here is uh, the quote and the attribution. And then again, I have a timer on here and I can see that this one was numbered 24. And so, so on and so forth, I have um, all of my different cells in here. And this was again, a two by four factorial design. Uh, so that means that there are eight different treatments. And then I also had two control groups. So I have 10 different cells in here. That's a lot to keep, um, uh, you know, a track of in this process. So um, I went ahead and on our stimulus um, paperwork that we submitted to the IRB, I sort of made some cheat sheets for us. And so um, here are all of our stimulus articles and it shows um, what the change is. But I have gone in here and I have identified um, for uh, the information that I'm going to see in Qualtrics when I do the download um, into SPSS, I have identified what variable name is going to tell me that people were in that particular cell. And so let me show you how I did this. Um, again, I'm going to go into, uh, this is the Navy response, Navy is the organization versus Carnival Cruise, and then the um, type of apology that they gave was a concession apology. So I scroll down into here and I see that question 23 is uniquely identified as only being in this cell. And so I just wrote down the timer question. Uh, let's see, 23 concession response by US Navy. Um, so that I have a little guide um, in here so that I can go ahead and make sure that I know um, what each of these cells are. So in order to download, you go into that particular um, Qualtrics file, that Qualtrics project, you go into data analysis, you go export, you export data, you're going to do it as SPSS, and then you press download, and then it's ready for you um, to open. So I have it uh, already open on my computer, and this is what Qualtrics has given me um, in SPSS. So as I look at the data view, you can see in here there's a lot of holes. And if you don't remember 
um, how your study was set up, you might get a little nervous about these holes. Well, this is exactly the way that it should be because that means that this person right here went through one particular stimulus. He did not experience, if we look across, any of the other stimuli of the other nine versions of the stimuli. And then he finished up and he answered the questions on the manipulation check at the end. So um, this section, I'll go ahead and highlight it for you so you can see it uh, more clearly. This section from there to there is actually um, broken up into our 10 different experimental cells. And so I need to kind of clean this up to make this a little bit easier to understand so that I can actually run my manipulation check in here. Um, if I go into variable view uh, in here, then I can see exactly um, what the uh, questions are named. And this is where I'm going to match it up with what I have in here. So here I see question 23. Here I see, ah, here's the block for everybody that participated in question 23. And so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to use this as an opportunity to say, well, I know that these people were all in cell number five. So I'm going to, anytime I see data um, in any of these columns, I'm going to mark that they were cell number five. So first thing I need to do is I'm just going to go to the very beginning and I'm going to insert a new variable. Regardless of whether you have a complex data set like I have or you have a really easy one, if you have an experiment, you have to do this. You have to put all of your cells in a single variable so that we know which one it is. So here's my variable. I'll go ahead and give it a name. I'll make sure that we know that this is the experimental cell and cell. Perfect. And then I'll go back over again to the data side. And now I could go through and I could say, oh, look, here's one. So that's going to be, oops, it's actually cell five. If you remember on my little cheat sheet here, cell five, I'm going to put a five there. And I could scroll down and I could look for all of them um, when they came up. And then I could make them all fives. But ain't nobody got time for that. So what we're going to do instead is let's just make sure that this is 23. And on my cheat sheet, 23, perfect. And I'm going to uh, sort descending. And it looks like only one person um, got cell number five. Um, so I would want to let this, um, this particular um, pilot test run out a little bit more because I don't want to base it on one person's data. Um, but for the purposes of moving on, let's go ahead and now let's go to the second one. So this guy is Let's open him up, number 24. So 24 is going to be cell number one. You can see right here, cell number one. So again, I'm going to sort descending, and then these guys are going to be cell number one. And then I'm gonna move them over, and I'm gonna do this 10 different times total so that I can Oops, I have I have them in the wrong spot. Sorry. That was just a visual error for me. Nothing nothing bad happened. Okay. So then this guy is number 25. Let's look in here. Where's 25? 25 is cell number 6. So I'm going to give these guys sixes. All right. And then I'm going to move it to the end and next one sort descending so this one is cell number 26 and that is cell 2 so now I'm going to type in a 2 and then I'm going to move it oops sort descending and then this guy's name is 27 so that is going to be cell 7 for me 
Again, I figured out which cells these were by doing this legwork um, before I even started the video. And so I took a little bit of time and I went back to um, my stimulus and I just made sure that um, I had sort of like a master key so that I could run through this very quickly on the video. Um, 28, 28 links up with three. So perfect. And we are so close to being almost done here. Descending. And 29. 29 is cell number eight. One is 34. 34 is cell number nine. This one is 35. 35 is cell number 10. I could also put this on my clipboard if I wanted to and copy it down. That works as well. And it looks like this one is probably going to be the last one. Descending. Number 30. 30 is cell number 4. Alright, so in here, I can go ahead and see, is there anybody who was not even assigned a cell? So I'm going to sort ascending to get those, if there were any zeros or missing data up to the top. There are none. Let me just do descending to make sure that there are no problems. Yep, there are no problems. So I can see that everybody was assigned a cell. And I can also see in here that um, these are my manipulation check questions right here. So going all the way down the line, it looks like everybody um, actually answered the manipulation check question. Now, in general, Qualtrics, if you, in the survey flow, um, check that you want it to uh, show your stimuli in the randomization um, equally, it's going to. But if somebody goes to your um, consent form and then they press next, it's going to count all of a sudden that they showed that particular cell. And so your cells are not going to be a hundred percent equal. It's just going to um, attempt to show them in that in, in as equal of a manner as it can. And so that's why you're going to have um, slightly unequal cell sizes, but they should be grouped around the same size. Um, so in general, we do have everything grouped around the same size, except for that very first one that we did where we only had one person. So people obviously did not like the article that they saw and they just um, didn't want to uh, continue on when they were when they were getting that one. Um, okay, so I have my cells all figured out. Um, it's going to be easier for me if I can actually um, write in here uh, what type of cell it is. So if I come into experimental cell, I can say that uh, one is this one, press add, cell two is this one. And it's helpful if you do get this set up in here um, into this new variable that you've created because otherwise you're just going to have to be um, going back and forth between your notes trying to figure out exactly what um, you have. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'll just do these first couple um, and then say OK. So I have experimental cell. I'm just going to drag them down to the bottom to my actual um, questions, which was, you know, um, uh, what organization was involved? Was it Carnival Cruise or was it the Navy in there? And then the other question, the article I read, and then it has all of these different things. They took the blame or the responsibility. They provided an excuse. Um, they offered a solution or remedy. Um, they said that they were extremely sorry or um, there was no quote whatsoever. So we want to see if people understood 
um, the difference between these four quotes, or no quote at all, um, that they saw in the shell of the story that we gave everybody. So um, because uh, cell, experimental cell, is a nominal or categorical variable, again, I don't have it all filled out, but I have my cheat sheet here, um, and because um, what was the organization is a nominal or categorical variable, I have two nominal variables, and in order to see if they're um, how they're how they're uh, mixing together, I'm going to use uh, a chi-square. So analyze descriptive statistics and cross tabs. And um, for me today, it doesn't matter which one I put where. I'm going to put cell in the rows just because there are ten cells. Um, and then I'm going to put um, uh, which organization was involved. That's going to be Q43. You can kind of see it in the background here over there. And I'm going to press cells. I'll do all of these. And then I'm also going to go into chi-square. And the first thing I do when I look at a chi-square is I go all the way to the bottom and I see is the p-value good? Yes, the p-value is good. So whatever people thought they were in up here is exactly what they thought. So um, concession by Carnival Cruise. So of the people who got the Carnival Cruise one, three of the people who got this particular cell said that this article had Carnival Cruise. None of the people said it had Navy. So that means this one worked because look, this is Carnival Cruise. Excuse by Carnival Cruise. Four of the people that got this one said it was Carnival Cruise. Zero of the people that got this one said it was Navy. They're correct, Carnival Cruise, uh, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and let's look at cell six. Let me just pull over. My screen would not be crazy here for a minute. I could show you. So cell number six is Navy, as you can see back on the back end here. Uh, cell number six is Navy. So when I go into cell number six, I should see zero people said it was Carnival Cruise. Carnival Cruise, zero people. And then the people that said it was U.S. Navy, there were five people. So this one was correct as well. So I would go through each of these um, iterations of my um, independent variable to make sure that whatever people got, which is represented for me over here, is what they identified, which is represented over here. And then I would repeat this for the other independent variable, which for me um, is a little bit more involved because I have um, 10 different cells. Um, so this is how you run a manipulation check and make sure that indeed you have the differences um, that you think you are going to have. Um, if you find that there's a problem with one of your manipulations, like maybe people can't tell the difference between a concessional response and an emotional display, then you need to um, figure out um, by looking at the two different uh, the two differences in those in those um, stimuli what you can do to further um, emphasize that one is emotional and one is a concessional response and then um, try the pretest, um, the pilot test again. So good luck with your experiments and enjoy.